Yeah, yeah, where am I right now? This is Orlando Mayor, Buddy Dyer. <laughs> MCO. Have you flown an MCO? <laughs> if you have, everyone heard that went, uh. <laughs> Welcome to City Beautiful. If you're here, or no, what does he say? He's like, oh, um. I turn it out. <laughs> if you live here, welcome home. If you're visiting, make sure to check out one of our like uh, amusement parks. Like this and that. This is how you know Zach's been to the airport way too many times. Yeah, he should change up the dialogue. You know. You are tuning in to the Cigar Guys podcast, where aficionados and newcomers alike gather to explore the vast cigar universe. Meet your host, Alexander Gonzalez, Mark Nikolai, his big little brother, Zachary Nikolai, and Jared Burroughs. So sit back, light up, and let's get the conversation started. Thank you for tuning into another episode of the Cigar Guys podcast. We are here once again, episode 63, Jared Burroughs. Give a wave to the camera. Zach Nikolai, thank you for being here. What do I do to the camera? Um, point. And me, Alexander Gonzalez. Mark is on his way, but we started early to teach him a lesson about punctuality technically we started late we still started late we actually gave him an opportunity to show up semi-late but now he's really late so we're going to teach him a lesson on punctuality punctual you know about you know being punctual is very important especially in a certain field a field that we will be discussing today networking podcasting is podcasting is networking a field it could be really Sorry, I was talking without the mic, so. Can you please start over, actually? No. Yeah. We got, we got you know, there's three people present, but two are out, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Isn't that crazy how that works? I'm just like, all right, we're good. So anyway, we're talking today about networking, business, but specifically with cigars. So the topic of yeah. today is how cigars can help you uh, further your success, improve your network, and some stuff along those lines, topics along those lines. We'll be sharing some stories, uh, some statistics, some data, um, you know, and we're just going to get into it. And that's it. So yeah, it improves your success. It, I mean, that's all you need to know. Thank you guys for tuning in to another episode. <laughs> <laughs> No, but um, yeah, I think cigars are big. I mean, they were big at one point. They went down. But I mean, now I think they're even coming back even stronger, like a big aspect to networking yourself. Um, you know, I mean, we all grew up or I guess maybe we grew up, you know, I don't know. But we've always heard like the saying, you know, hey, you know, yeah, deals are made in the office, but you know, billion dollar deals are made on a golf course. You know what I mean? Or so, in the men's restroom. Yeah, men's restroom, wherever. You know, not the women's restroom, though. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, we're gonna, gonna get back to that one. A little bit. Piggybacking off that, right? <clears throat> like these huge deals are always made on golf courses. You know, even in the uh, uh, the McDonald's movie that's on Netflix. Yeah. You know, they're on a golf. The course. founder. Yeah, the founder. Yeah, they were arguing on the golf course. Um, it's a little loud, isn't it? For you, it is. Yeah. That's you. Well, why is it so loud? Did you? Why well, change it now? Oh, okay, thank you. Sorry, Zach. <laughs> Sorry, there's a little Mr. Producer like, Can I finish too. my like segue into the world? Like, Absolutely, please. Yeah. This is so this, anyway. this should never happen. <laughs> so what goes great with golf courses? Cigars. Oh, but but now a lot of people, you know, I mean, like golf is super popular, but a lot of people don't, you know, play golf that well. <laughs> so it's like i mean us us <laughs> but cigars are another gateway where like these deals or these ideas you know people make come up from and you know it's where you can meet people 
you know, with a, a guy's a beginner engineer and a, another guy's a CEO of an engineering firm, and they both come together in the cigar lounge, yeah, and they pick each other's brains because, hey, you know what? At the end of the day, whatever their title is, they're both cigar smokers. Yeah, you know I mean, I don't know how many times you've said this. It's been a lot of times, but uh, cigars really are one of the best icebreakers. Um, I mean, it's the ultimate like playing field basically or it levels the playing field if that makes sense you know kind of like you said entry level guy ceo uh there's almost like an instant bond that happens when you're smoking cigars with a group of people or one other person or whatever um and we've seen it happen in our own lives we've seen it happen with other people i mean uh the fact that we even have our own cigar brand kind of helps too because it's a little more unique than you know when you give someone a cigar if it's yours, that's another level of uniqueness to it. But I mean, regardless, sharing a cigar with someone, especially if you give a cigar to someone that you either want to do business with or, you know, want to get to know better, that's kind of like a great way. It's almost like buying a drink for someone. Yeah. I would say it's a little more personal though, because buying a drink, everyone does that. I mean, but to, cigar, to add on to your substantial point previously stated, that's how we all met, actually. Through a cigar, actually. Pretty much. Pretty yeah. much. Yeah, actually, yeah. Yeah. Well, actually, I mean, yeah, technically, I mean, I knew Zach, but we officially became friends through cigars. That's, yep, that's very true. Yeah. Mark then joined later on because of cigars and true. whiskey, you know. Yeah. How'd you meet Mark? Uh, I met Mark uh, smoking <laughs> a cigar as I exited the womb. Mm. Yeah, so. And he was smoking a cigar in the delivery room? No, well, no, he wasn't smoking a cigar. I'm the one that actually came into the world mm. with a cigar you know okay you know at least i hope it was a cigar uh. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> no, moving on moving on moving on and then i met mark while smoking cigars and then i met zach and that's how we met alex i think <laughs> <laughs> yeah mark came up to us one day he's like oh have you seen that guy jared at you know corona i'm like i don't know who you're talking about and then he's like he's like jared like he comes in all the time you know always drinks mccown i'm like oh the weird guy <laughs> and i'm like yeah i met him he's kind of weird though and then you know look at us now <laughs> i just remember like me and him used to sit with each other sometimes and he'd be like hey did you know my brother's an engineer too and then that's how i met alex i'm a podcasting engineer remember that <laughs> <laughs> I, I realized that I too am an engineer. I'm a podcast engineer. And I didn't even make that title up. Someone else did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so man, Mark is late. Mark is really, really late now. He said he's on his way. Yeah. And I'm going to Mars tomorrow. Oh, with Elon? Yeah. With my boy E? Well, what happened was I gave him the base of cigar. And he was like, oh, I don't really smoke, but this is cool. Uh, do you want to come on my rocket ship? And I said, hey, yo. <laughs> <laughs> and turns out he actually made a real rocket ship. Thank God. So uh, we're going to Mars tomorrow. But uh, speaking of Elon Musk, did you see that? Inter- did you watch any of that interview he did with Don Lemon? No, I didn't. To be honest with you. Did you, Jared? I lost a few IQ points listening to that. It was pretty bad. I mean, regardless of what side you're on, I can't believe they try to like keep pinning Elon a certain way. I honestly don't know how he gets so much shit done, like through SpaceX, X, Tesla, because he's on drugs, and they throw like politics on him for no reason. Yeah. It's very strange. You know, he knows what he's talking about, though, with you know politics and stuff. And if he doesn't, he says, "I don't know." The the people of X will tell you. E- Elon kind of reminds me of Trump a little bit, like. This guy probably never sleeps. You know, he's always on Twitter. <laughs> Except he actually thinks but, before he speaks. Yeah, that, yeah, that is true. I yeah. think the difference with uh, Elon Musk is that, like, uh, he never really takes a side. He's just like, hey, I just turned off the censorship of X. Let people post. Let's see what happens. And regardless, just like, let anyone speak. Yeah. Just to see what happens. But know? to some people, that is taking a side. It is weird. Well, yeah, it shouldn't be that way, though. Yeah, it shouldn't. I mean, you know. That's just where we are at this point. Like, flying an American flag. You know, yeah. it's like yeah. you're gonna automatically assume that they're Republican. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Or even more basic stuff like you know, like EV jokes. I mean, it happens all the time. If you buy a Tesla, people think a certain way. Yeah. If you're like pro uh, SpaceX versus just old or school if, NASA, like you lived in California. 
which I think is funny. I think they did a study on who buys the most Teslas, and it's mostly like Republicans. Follow the money. Well, you could argue, right, that Republicans tend to take try to get more tax breaks, and they would get tax breaks with an EV. Mm. So are you right? saying uh, Elon Musk is like the head of the Republicans then? Oh, breaking news. <laughs> you heard it here first. I pledge allegiance to Elon Musk. <laughs> and the rockets <laughs> getting glare. But yeah, this episode is going to be censored from X. What? Elon, I was just joking. And it's what? okay. He said he only takes down yeah, things from the platform that are illegal. So as long as what we're doing is not illegal. I love how the fact that um, how patient he is in these interviews. And then with Don Lemon, he says like, um, he's like, you asked me to come on here. He's like this he awkward. He spent over like, an hour with him. Yeah. It's like. And then towards the end, he's like, all right, you only got five minutes. Treat your questions carefully. <laughs> <laughs> Elon Musk said that? Yeah. That's so funny. Yeah. He has to go back to he, work. He was clearly getting irritated like towards the end of the interview. I can imagine. I mean, like, yeah, Elon Musk's time management skills must be on point. And yeah. I'm sure he's not the one managing his time. Um, he's definitely got people that make sure he's, you know, going to the next place. On yeah, time. yeah. I mean, I mean, and I'm sure he does a lot of stuff like virtually, like meetings and everything. Yeah. You know, if he even attends. I, I'm sure. Well, too, he, I mean, Don Lemon came to, I think it was what, the Tesla um, headquarters or warehouse or something like that. So, yeah. I mean, he came to him. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Like I said, I really don't know how he does it with all the company's employees. And then I think he has seven or nine children now. Are you going to use that or are you going to close it? What do you mean? I'm just asking, are you going to use it? I thought you were going to make me a drink. Oh, I have to make you a drink? That would be nice. Let me grow with two more hands. <laughs> Maybe Mark can make it for you. I don't know. Punishment. Anyways, you, you guys, make sure. You and then make it with that hand. Make sure to check out Bark and Barware. Uh, we've been using their glass smoker to smoke our whiskeys, our old fashions. Um, it's fantastic. It comes with six different woods, uh, some granite, you know, ice. I, they're not even ice, but some granite, like chill blocks. Um, uh, whiskey stones. Whiskey stones, thank you. Mark just showed up. So, Mark, come on in. Hopefully, he brought us some treats for being late. And no hat today. I, I'm not sure. Damn, no hat. What is going on with him? My shirt, no hat. Crazy story. <laughs> okay, do share. Um, I can't on the podcast. I might get in trouble. Oh, that's true. That's true. Yeah, don't share that story. What is this? Uh, was it? Was box. it? Was it bought? What do you mean? Was it bought? What, no, what, no, no. Did yet. you buy the shares? No. One point okay. five at two point three. No, no, no. Still in the process of looking. Looking okay. for shares? I thought we were settled on the shares. He meant negotiations. He's off today. It's okay. I know. I know. I know what you meant to say, Mark. So I'm smoking a JFK. What are you guys smoking? <laughs> <laughs> I am smoking oh, J- JFR. JFR. Wow, you <laughs> actually meant that? <laughs> I'm smoking a uh, uh, every day cigar day. Uh, I'm smoking oh. the Habano. Very cool. Nice, yeah. Jared. Just a Monte Cristo F- FSG. Put a sun grown together. I guess. Wow. Jared can't get enough of that Florida sun. I actually gave him that cigar. Yeah, I'll say... Uh, they forced it that? upon him. Oh, the one day I brought a cigar, Jared didn't. Oh, Monte Cristo of his I did say that. I was like, damn. That's not totally fair because last time I gave you one of my cigars. That is true. And yeah, I had the bag right ah, here to prove it. He would have had a cigar today if you had brought your own. So this is what we call in software engineering an off by one error because I'm off by one. I, I would have had a cigar with me. It's okay. Mark's off by like 27. That is not true. I brought a cigar today. <laughs> 26. Did Zach bring that cigar? I did. Hmm. I <laughs> He's trying to make you a... Uh, so, okay. <laughs> this is a ball conversation ball. Zach and I have once a year about the simulation being broken. I think the simulation is now tilted on his axis once again. Why? You both brought cigars. That's out of the ordinary. So when the simulation is broken, things that are out of the ordinary that don't know, normally happen start happening. He knows well, what I'm talking I, about. I, the only reason I actually have this is because uh, the person I was supposed to meet up was late. So I, was, I, w- I just went there and I bought one real fast. Again, someone else was late meeting you. You weren't the one being late. That's odd. You yeah, have a, a cool cigar. Letter. Thank you. <laughs> I see it. He, he had it last time. It remember? came with a... Did he? Yeah, remember? Bark and barware. I don't remember. It's been like three weeks or two weeks. 
Not only were you here for that episode, you didn't <laughs> even watch it. <laughs> Pretty sure there was one where Zach wasn't here. Anyway, back to uh, what we were talking about. Real quick. Mark being a communist. Uh, oh, oh, pause. <laughs> pause. <laughs> I am anything but a communist. A socialist? No. A, anything but. They're completely different from what I've been told. So uh, today I'm smoking a closed-footed cigar, and the way you're supposed to smoke these oh my God. is you put it in your mouth, and you light up the bottom, and you take a taste of that binder. Binder? So, of that wrapper. Thank you. So let's go ahead and um, do it for you guys. For the audio listeners, he is carefully... Li- uh, way too much, way too much, way too much. He is lighting the shaggy foot uneven. of his cigar you, you a spot up. in order to taste strictly the wrapper of the cigar, but it doesn't matter because he burns straight through the wrapper and is <laughs> lighting up the filler and binder as well. Did so. we wait 20 extra minutes for that? You know what's funny? Brand new insight. Well, guys, I don't know anybody that does that. Yeah, no. Oh, yeah. Well, thank you guys for tuning in. <laughs> Supposedly, that's so, this whole industry is like smoke mirrors. Everything is marketing. Everything is good you know, pun. Yeah. But I'm convinced that most things that, most innovations in the cigar industry were an accident, and then they just hyped it up and made it like something that it really wasn't meant to be. I feel like that's with everything, though. Like fruitcake? Yeah, but the cigar industry is like smoking mirrors. I, I feel like the main purpose of the closed footed cigar was probably just to protect the foot. I think it's just convenience. Because you, you're eliminating one step. Uh, no. Yes. Yeah, you are. No, because when they roll it, they still have to cut it. So they would just cut it without the wrapper first. No, but they do that anyway. Yeah, but they still got to cut it anyways. But they... Th- no, you ever seen Omega? They, they roll it. They put in the thing. Yeah. They take it out. But sometimes they... they put the wrapper on. Okay. And then they cut it. Right. So they're not taking out. It's not taking out a step. I think. It, I think personally. I think what makes the most sense is that it was to protect the foot of the cigar. I think it was to not protect it. Actually, I think it was so you could taste the wrapper by itself. I don't know, but I. You know, what I do know. I have some guys that could probably find out through the power of networking. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, back to the thing we were talking about 20 minutes ago. Uh, I had a story that I was going to share. And um, I totally blanked because we started talking about Elon Musk. And then Mark showed up and shared wonderful cigar insight about (laughs) how you can taste exclusively the wrapper leaf of the cigar, which he totally botched. Do you really have a story to share, but you can't share it? Or are you just saying that? Can we move on from the story that he can't share on the camera or on the microphone? I just want to know if it existed or not. It does. Uh, just <laughs> about as much as that dent on your rim. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> oh, man. You know, I know a guy through networking that could fix that dent. There we go. Doesn't even exist. Like that story. <laughs> <laughs> but when, uh, I mean, when it comes to cigars, I've actually uh, gained a couple marketing clients from cigars being in the cigar lounge and that icebreaker it's like oh you know what do you do i do marketing and the guy's like oh i have xyz company can you help me and i said absolutely we can help anyone but that's kind of like the the way that you get in with some of these people and people a lot of people that smoke cigars if you look at you know the demographics a lot of business people uh or you know corporate people people that generally make money you got you got to make Decent amount of money to smoke cigars. Let's be honest. Cigars are not cheap. Um, I mean, that's getting factory s- smoked. Yeah, that's debatable. Everyday Even, Cigar Day has cheap stuff. That's true. And they're they're good. Are, They're becoming more accessible for sure. But even, you know, if you look at, like, history, of course, it used to be strictly, for the most part, a elitist thing. People with money. And then slowly but surely it became more affordable. Um... But, and then it became less affordable because of this economy. Exactly. A guy that doesn't even smoke cigars 
but smokes crack. Mm. Increased cigar inflation on us. How, how selfish is that? Honestly. For real. Like affecting an industry you have nothing to do with. I'd say it's pretty selfish. Uh, yeah. No cracks. I like it. <laughs> yeah, Mark's been demoted to the small glass because of his mishap from last week. Is it because it's thicker and won't crack as easy? Partially, yeah. But I was debating. I was like, which glass do I want to risk? I actually like this glass better. It's fancier. All right, man. I feel like more... Fancy. Fancy. Good word. That is true. And I got this gold lighter. I read a thesaurus on my downtime. I want to put this on a necklace. <laughs> Everybody's sick, actually. Yeah. You know how like the jewelers have like the the magnifying yeah. glass as a necklace? There you go, Jared. Loosen up a little bit. Can you uh, smoke it for me? I'm sure someone else can. I got you. No, I want, I want Alex to do it. Too it's bad. too bad. You can't get everything you want in life. What We're going to do a live demonstration like? real quick. Let's do a maple one. You want maple? Try a flavor oh, that I no one else mine, has tried. I want mine smoked, too. Are you, are you, no. Smoke your own. I can smoke one. I want to smoke one. All right. Uh, you want maple? Yeah. I don't think... Maple one was pretty good. We don't got maple. No, I'm joking. Zach just can't read. All right. Before we get back into the conversation, we're going to do... I'm just looking. A demonstration of how to use the Bark and Barware smoking kit. I feel like I came in and just totally... Ruin the vibe. Switch conversation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for sure. It's okay. We'll get to the we'll get to the conversation eventually. So it's actually, you know, these smoking kits, um, they work better when you're networking. No, they work better with, uh, like, if you have an ice cube in it, because is that true? Yeah, really? because hot air rises and cold air falls. So when you light it, it actually pulls the smoke down. Ah, that's kind of cool. Hmm. It does a pretty good job of pulling the smoke down in my experience of doing it three times. No, it does. I mean, you, next time you see it, like... Um, Is it going to get more smoky? What? With ice in it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. All right, so you fill that part in the center with some wood chips, and then you light the inside, and then you might be able to see it if you look closely, zoom in. Uh, audio listeners, sorry, but... Go check out our TikTok. We did a, we're did. we posting a TikTok video on it. Or you can look it up on YouTube. Yeah, it's not that much And then smoke. you want to put a top on it to prevent the smoke from getting out. Which uh, So to be clear, the wood chips don't go in the whiskey. No, Jared. The wood chips do not go in the whiskey. <laughs> there you go. Put the top on. That helps keep some of the smoke in there. Now you let it sit for 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's four to five minutes. No, it's actually, oh, it's like, oh, my bad. it's like two minutes, three minutes. Did you see, did you see that? There was like this one TikTok or whatever. He, uh, he tells people how to cook and he's like, put your vegetables in the oven at like 375 for 45 minutes. Well, and it's at 25 minutes. So a guy did it. <laughs> and then it's like literally just dust. <laughs> They smell burning, but we just got to keep going. And once you're ready, or if you want to smoke it again, that's ba that's basically how you use it. Then you take it off. Oh, you and, uh, oh there you go. Yeah, I guess you, you got to do it a second time to get optimal smoking. It's like, you know, sometimes you got to relight your cigar. It's, it's spinning it around there, get more of the, more of the smoke. Mmm. Incorporate it, yeah. Shake it. That's yeah. a nice cloud in there. Then you bring it to your guest. <laughs> there you go. Then you pop it off and get a little little volcano. Whoa. You know how we got in contact with these people? Digital networking. The internet. Correct. Networking on the internet. Building your network via followers and uh, engagement on the web, Which, increasing okay, your brand awareness. Super important nowadays. It, yeah, it's becoming more and more important, but it's also becoming more and more competitive. For sure. Very, very competitive. What For do you sure. want? What flavor do you want? Uh, I don't know. 
Apple, cherry, pear, hickory, oak, pear. maple. Wood. Our first I, pear. Shout out to all my pears. Uh, but yeah, I think um, that's actually um, a good little pocket of conversation. The importance of not only networking in person with cigars or without cigars, obviously with cigars, but the on the aspect of it being online uh, yeah. in any industry. I think you're right, though. It is getting a little congested. A little For sure. Convoluted. It just makes me wonder, how did people network before the internet? <laughs> well, Jared, before computers, they had this thing called the outdoors. You have to actually leave your house in order to go talk to people. That's how I got to the studio. Okay, so you are aware. Not an expert, but aware. <laughs> I found a way here. That's true. But yeah, I mean, a lot of things are moving. Obviously, a lot of things are moving towards digital. AI has become very, very uh, important, I would say. It's become more and more important. So people are utilizing it more and more, which in turn means that they are utilizing some form of social media, internet for their business, marketing. Uh, it's a great tool to market yourself. So similar to if you're networking in person, you can uh, build your personal brand on social media. And in turn, when you become famous, it's a lot easier to gain new business. That's, I mean, you see people like Andrew Tate, for example, most famous man in the world now, who doesn't want to do business with a guy? Okay, I take that back. A lot of people want to do business with him, but you know he's very controversial, so there's another whole side to that where people don't want to do business with him. But someone like that that's high level, why would you not? He's making a lot of money. Why would you not want to make money with him? Yeah, and I, I mean, one thing that like the internet's been good on versus, you know, just like, I don't know, going outside. Um, <laughs> Uh, you have access to a lot more people, um, and a lot of people don't want to reach out, mm -hmm. even though like they can. They just don't know that they can. Um, but you could reach out to like high ups in companies, and odds are, you know, someone from their team will respond to you. True. Um, whether it's for a deal, um, you know, if you have a small, let's just say you developed a small app or something that you could, you know, you think could work good with their their systems. So you could be like, you could message them directly, you know, you just got to market yourself correctly, right. and message them directly. And then, you know what, then you, you know, you're good. Well, that's why it's important too. if you can um, increase your personal brand, then it helps you be able to accomplish stuff like that. Because if you have a guy that messages you, let's say you're CEO of a big company and a guy that's got 10 followers messages you, you're probably not even going to see that. You see it, what, what just happened? Zach's cigar exploded. It's got dynamite in it. But um, I kind of, like tapped it in the wrapper. Just it's probably my fault. It's been out for a little bit. Um, if a guy messages you though, and he's got five hundred thousand followers and a blue check mark, that might be more appealing than the guy that made his account yesterday. But what's crazy is like I don't know if it was just how we were raised, I guess, or. You know, it's like a generational thing. A lot of people have issues marketing themselves. You know, they don't want to put everything that they're good at online, like on LinkedIn, let's just say, or um, if they have their own website that talks about themselves, um, they like almost feel bad, like putting everything they know because they don't want to come off as like, you know, I'm smarter than you, yeah. right? You know, but it has nothing to do with that. You know, a company here is looking for, you know, let's just say the best person to do the job. And then now you have a group of people that don't want to tell them how good they would be at doing that job. Um, so like, I think like part of networking and, you know, marketing, like it's just learn how to market yourself. You know, yeah. yeah. I think what stops a lot of people too, is like the, um, like feeling like they're looking desperate. You know what I mean? Yeah. I guess it makes sense. Me yeah. personally, when I go in an interview, I can do everything. What do you need? I can do it. I'm an expert. 10,000 mm -hmm. hours. Done. 
But then some it. some people hate that. Well, yeah. I mean, if you're obviously lying, then yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I get what you're saying. Don't be afraid to like promote yourself. Yeah. It it is like like what Mark said too, you know, it's like you want to seem desperate, you know. And one I saw this this lady talked uh about like interviews and she's like once someone told me this uh about you know being interviewed by people she's like i've never gotten i've never gotten an interview and not been offered a job after and you have to walk into that interview as if they need you right you don't need them right so like you know you ask some questions like what would you do for me you know why why would you know why would you pick me to go to this job you know why would you you know i mean this is just off the top of my head but like, if you walk into an interview like that, then it's like they, sh- you're confident. You know, they see that you're confident. They see yeah. that you know everything on the resume you put is true because you're like, ask me questions about my resume. What are you curious about me? You know, don't don't just sit there and let them ask all the questions about yourself. You know, they ask yeah. one question. You know, oh, uh, what do you know about Linux? Right? It's like, oh, what do I know about Linux? Well, in my downtime, you know, I literally spend my time on the on the computer you know and i just write code or you know i look at the infrastructure i try to keep it secure with cybersecurity. i try to do this i try to do this and like you go down a rabbit hole of you just talking about the stuff you did and they appreciate that more mm. you know like i think the last interview i did you know the people interviewing me it was two people and like they barely spoke and I brought in, you know, parts for a rocket. I brought in, like, everything I knew, basically, at that point. Yeah. You know, and I brought in, like, props. I'm like, yeah, this is what I did. This is how I did it. You know, this is our my time management skills. I had everything laid out, you know. And it was, like, stuff I had already. Just printed it out, whatever. But well, that's good, too, because they don't have to do all, like, the digging. So it makes it easier on them, and they see you as someone that's more knowledgeable and, you know, more equipped for the position. Because you're in there and you're like, hey, this is what I can do. This is what I yeah. can do for your company, all that. Then the fact not everyone has a homemade built rocket at their house. I know? guess that did help, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> that was a perk. Zach, they walked in. Zach walked in. They were like, what the hell is this? <laughs> <laughs> he brought a weapon to interview. <laughs> everyone duck. <laughs> it was just parts of the rocket, from yeah. what I understand. I don't think he brought the entire no nine foot feet rocket. tall. Oh. So, Mark, this is how you actually taste a wrapper right here. <laughs> actually, oh, uh, oh, 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 no Mark, way. you want to see something? No is way. That Mark? Is that a Pedoma? No. Uh, uh. Look at that. So, last episode, we discovered a Mark on the cigar. Yeah. And what we found is that companies that do uh, draw tests on the cigars will mark it so they know if it passed or not. Hmm. So, we learned something new. I'm very curious what they use to market because last time it looked like a sharpie yeah it this looks straight different. up like a sharpie this looks almost like chalk that's what i was gonna say i'm just curious like i bet it's some what kind they, of what they use you know is it like you know like for instance when you use the glue it's all natural it's basically gelatin it's safe to eat i bet you i bet you it is gelatin mixed with something like dye like, or something or it's probably yeah. just like a non-toxic marker yeah. you know yeah. yeah that's true yeah like well I, no because I mean, even non-toxic markers, when, like, if you if they get on fire, they, it becomes toxic. So I bet you it's some kind of. I bet you it's like gelatin mixed with some kind of natural food coloring. Maybe, maybe it's just the. You know how they dye cigars sometimes, like the wrapper. Maybe it's like that same stuff, and they just kind of make like a line. Yeah, but the blue was weird. It it straight up looked like a sharpie. I'm gonna be honest with you. It did. Yeah, it did. It was blue. It was blue. Like yeah, the, you know, like it's like a purplish uh-huh. blue. He, well, oh. you wouldn't know. You're colorblind. I yeah. thought I thought it was black. Yeah, see? You know what I mean, though. You write with a Sharpie. It's black, but it's yeah. got like a purple tint to it, a little purple hue, at least in my experience with my 2020 vision. So every Podomo cigar would have one. Supposedly. Yeah, it's like a purplish black. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, at least those companies that do it draw test every single cigar. But you know what's funny is that the draw wasn't super great on that cigar. Ooh interesting yeah so what are the uh qualifications for passing are are we lowering the standard for cigar draws so they, they put it in a tube and it's like an air pressure thing to see right. how much 
you know, pressure it takes. Right, right, exactly. But what if the standard's too low? But that could also change with humidity. That is true. Right? So if the scar is more humid, the tobacco's going to expand a little bit. It's going to be a tighter draw. Hmm. That's a good point. That's why Cubans, you got to, you know, leave them out for probably the day before, just so it dries up a little bit. Yeah. True. Keep it at low humidity, lower humidity. It's a good point. Hmm. So it's almost like a gimmick if you really think about it. Uh, draw testing? Yeah. Well, not necessarily because, I mean, you could prevent a bad draw. Like, you could, this yeah, is you're way right about too that. tight. Yeah, you're right no about saving that. it, you know? I'm sure, you, obviously, you have a, a range that you want to stay in. So that way, if it does get more humid or whatever, the tobacco expands, it's not going to be as bad. Yeah. Like this passed the test, okay, if it fluctuates, it should still be tolerable. You know who sometimes has tight draws is uh, Tabernacles. Really? I don't think I've ever had a tight draw from them. I've had on the Lanceros. That, well, that but, might make sense. Yeah, that's a hard, that's a hard cigar to roll. Yeah, yeah. Lens, yeah, not only are they a hard cigar to roll, but obviously a smaller ring gauge. Yeah. You're going to have less airflow. Did you finish it? Of course. Okay. So it wasn't so bad, but the flavor's probably pretty good. You can't, you can't just toss a Tabernacle. You can't do it. You gonna watch me do it? <laughs> no. Please. This just in. Jared destroys cigars. <laughs> you can film me like smoking it and throwing it, and then someone catches it off camera. Mm. Mm. There's starving cigar smokers in <laughs> Europe. <laughs> <laughs> I say Europe because they're so expensive. Over I was there. just saying because they, they can't afford it. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about. So, are you encouraging me to do this? Or? No, I'm encouraging you not to. There's starving cigar smokers in Europe. It wasn't actually going to hit the floor. I'm just saying. So the person that catches it has a 50-50 shot of being burned. Well, maybe not 50-50, but like 25%. Wait, would you even light it or would you just buy it and throw it out? That one, that's actually safer to do so I don't burn the person who catches it. Yeah, but then you just look dumb and elitist. You don't have to publish it. (laughs) Jared's like, yeah, I have to blow all my... uh (laughs) All of my, oh man, what's the thing that they give you? I have to blow all of my allowance before the weekend, so uh, let me just buy this box and throw it out. <laughs> the thing they give you is allowance? Doesn't yeah. Google give you an allowance? Well, I'm just saying, like, you know. You, <laughs> are you talking to the points? People or someone, someone gives you, no, I'm just saying, like, in general. Your parents give you an allowance, Jared. Like, and a, tr- a trust, if you had it set up, it would give you an allowance. <clears throat> you know, you're, you're allowed to spend this amount every month. That's pretty cool. I'll create the uh, Jared Cigar Trust. Jared says, I call that a paycheck. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't belittle me with these child terms. If Jared ever did inherit like a crazy amount of cigars, he would need like a cigar allowance. Because <laughs> yeah, he, he would, would just blow I'll, through I'll it. I'll manage it. Jared, Jared randomly I'll gets... A, I'll take a percentage. Jared randomly gets the crate of Cubans that JFK brought over. He's like, oh, uh, how much of those Cubans have you smoked? Oh, I'm done. You got that two days ago. <laughs> That's true. I wonder how many Cubans they have. The White House. The White House? I don't know. There's been a decent amount of presidents. Yeah, they had them. I don't know, but not all of them probably smoked. Like Trump doesn't smoke. Yeah. Hmm. You don't know if Barron smokes. Biden doesn't smoke tobacco. <laughs> Barron smokes. <laughs> Barron smokes cigars? Put that as a headline. Barron smokes cigars? <laughs> question mark, exclamation point. <laughs> And they can't smoke it in public, right? Because it's like, oh, you're smoking a Cuban hypocrite, yeah. you know? They can smoke in the Oval Office. Can you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's sick. Of course, man. I'd be in there. Not doing shit. Just smoking Cubans. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you got to think about it. Back in the day, they, they probably smoked, you know, in the White House. Everyone did. Yeah, true. True. Yeah, just like in court, in the office, in the house. Yeah. Yeah. But this time, it's the White House. If I was president, I'd be like... All right, embargoes are gone from Cuba only for cigars. <laughs> mm. That would tear the market up. What about rum? Yeah, uh, yeah, I'll take that too. Okay, cool, cool, cool. That would tear the market up for cigars. If the U.S. suddenly allowed Cuban cigars, it would definitely um, put New World cigars on pause for a bit. I, I don't think so. I don't think so. Not I, pause completely, but like, it people, would slow a, down. a lot of people would spend money on cubans for a bit i think what it would mess up is like 
Davidoff's. Oh, so the expensive uh, bays, ones. The expensive ones, yeah. It would, it would screw up the expensive market If you're going to spend $40, $50, you might as well get a Cuban. Exactly. It's a good point. So I think I actually think cheaper cigars would stay the same. Okay, yeah. But market in general, more people are going to buy Cubans. Yeah, if you're flooding the market with a whole other section, I mean... Not, not with the price points they're at. I don't think it would... I don't think it would... I do. In a heartbeat. Yeah. At least for six months or a year. Even people that smoke five dollars cigars religiously would put a little more money aside and uh, just I think I think they would it. buy one just to try it and then they, they would go right back. Still, everyone buys one. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I mean that's it, a little that's a little dip. It would also inc- increase the market, right? So it would get more expensive. Actually it could decrease the market. More competitive. Well no not even that, just because like, you know, a lot of New World cigars, you know, these certain lines that are made to mimic the Cuban cigars, they would just drop them. Mm-mm. Why would they? Why would they make them? You know, it's a good point. Hmm. Would the Habano wrapper become less popular? No, because just, just like my main not point, not in the slightest. Just like my main point is that the price point of Cubans are so high that it, I don't think it would affect the regular market. I think but, it would affect we, the high end. We don't know if market. it'd be high when it came to the U.S. It would definitely be high. Why would it be as high? Because it's high everywhere. Yeah, it doesn't matter, though. The U.S. is literally, you know, 58 miles away. Yeah, but they're only high right now because of demand. Which I get. I will and say shipping. that. They're high already, like in Europe, for example, because of how much it costs to ship them there. I but, would say that when it all, if it all leveled out, the United States would be cheaper compared to most other countries. Spain's, like, Besides Cuba, Spain's the cheapest. I think the U.S. would be cheap. But even South American companies are, or not companies, right. South American countries are still pretty, pretty pricey. So the thing is, I think that if they came to the United States, cigar shops would up the price. Especially initially, because, listen, you can buy them now, but you're going to pay a premium. I mean, why not? People are going to buy them regardless. They might be competitive with, like, U.K. prices. At least for a little bit, and then they might come back down. Uh, I mean, with the Atabay Black Ritos, you could buy it for 50, 60 bucks at some places. And, then, and just, then they all got together, all the lounges got together and said, you know what? Why don't we sell it for 100 bucks? No one else has it. Why don't we just test it out? Mark becomes president, does it. And then there, he has there to figure out how to become mayor first. Mark, 2028. He won't be old enough then. Yeah. What what season? Thirty five. Thirty five. Yeah, it won't be. Twenty thirty two. Yeah, there we go. That's a good. That's a good year. Thirty two. Thirty two. Twenty thirty two. Twenty seven. My oh. my whole campaign is making <laughs> Cuban cigars legal. <laughs> Cuban it's cigars. 50, 50 some thirty seven. Yeah. I People think are gonna it. be like, oh, we don't want to do business yeah, with Cuban. I'm like, look, look, we're not. The cigars. You Only can- the Cuban cigars <laughs> and rum. Yeah. You know I'd have South American lock or South Florida lock. Bro. Out in Miami. Waiting at the ports. Welcome to for my Miami. Cohibas. I had a Cuban sandwich today. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there yeah. you go. There you go. That's it. I'm in there. Mark supports Cuba. Mark is a man. <laughs> 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 listen let's put all our differences aside you know the embargo was enacted decades ago the, the, Cuban, the, the reasons are not valid anymore the Cuban place i go to they have a they have a picture of a uh, bald eagle like ripping apart the hammer and the sickle <laughs> there you go you know actually they're probably just as valid today as they are back then only what? because the U.S. has such a big hand in Ukraine. What what's valid today? Like the embargo. Oh, because the reason the whole embargo happened was because we had missiles in what? And I'm pretty sure it was Ukraine. We had missiles in Ukraine yeah. pointed at, you know, like uh, Russia, mm, yeah. and then they their ally Cuba, which is probably still their ally. You know, that is true. They, they definitely are. Yeah, allies. exactly. Yeah. So it's mm-hmm. like, so. Mark has to, I know this is controversial, he's got to shake Putin's hand, say, bygones be bygones, 
let's just come together, smoke Cuban cigars together. No big deal. We we withdraw our missiles. You withdraw yours. Whatever happens to Ukraine happens to Ukraine. Mark's like, I don't care about I don't care about no missiles. You're buying them from us anyway. You know, just give me the cigars. That's it. Like mm. like we said, the cigars are the ultimate icebreaker. Cigars bring people together. Surely, the United States can come to the table with Russia and say, "Listen, let's smoke some Cohibas. Let's get this all out of the way, and exactly. we can be one unified nation." What's and, a Russian? And I'm, I'm not no I'm not no pussy either. If he says no. You know I'm sending a couple of SEAL Team 6s over what's, there. What's, whoa, what's, whoa, what's, whoa, 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 pause. Whoa, whoa. He's joking, he's joking. <laughs> yeah. He's joking. Do the American thing and send a lot of weapons and start a coup, okay? God. <laughs> he still has something to learn. Don't send our troops. He's got years, though. He's <laughs> Convince got two- them to become troops. He's, I'm going to do a covert operation. <laughs> he's I'm going to be in the two front more line. Don't think I'm not going to be there. <laughs> he's got two more elections to learn. Diplomacy. Look, I'm going to be right in there. What's a Russian special <laughs> force? Is that Spetsnaz? We, right? we KBG. Really, we, KBG. Shit snaz. We, should really, uh, <laughs> we so, should really take it seriously and actually get your mayor campaign running ahead of time. Get you in there. Yeah. And then do like that guy did in Miami, uh, the mayor of Miami, and just start running for president every single time. Exactly. Mm. Because you can't technically run right now. You're not old enough. Lake Mary, then Orlando, then all of Florida, and then presidency. Isn't there a guy like all within five years? Something Patel that's always on the ballot? Patel? Yeah, you know, you remember we we talked about this last election for mayor or house, for president. It's always like oh, his name's oh, like Rocky Patel. I'm pretty sure because we talked about it last time. I don't know. I really don't his name's Rocky Patel. I'm pretty sure we talked about Rocky it last Patel time. is running for president. It's not him, but you know that would be wild. You know, if, if if one thing, if Joe Biden proved one thing to this nation is, if you run enough times, you'll make it. <laughs> Facts. That Have, guy ran. Has like, he ran before? The dude's ran like four times. Has he really? Yeah. yeah. He was pulling at like 3%, but... Pulling at 3% now. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's changed. <laughs> this is our back to basics episode. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, he was pulling at 3% last election, too. But what he, did, what he had now that he didn't have before was mail-in ballots. Do we have a mayor election? For like Mary in 2020, I think it happened last year, right? So, yeah, it happened last so year. it's 2020. Is it every two years Five? for Mayor? I wonder if that family still lives in Lake Mary, or if they moved to the next place. They exactly. probably moved to the next place. Exactly. I did research on him, and that, that's <laughs> yeah, like what yeah. they do. Yep. You know, he moved to a quote unquote small town. Yeah. Went to the oldest bar in Lake Mary that no one goes to. <laughs> yeah. The heart of Lake Mary, and like that's where he did his campaign. Should did at Corona. Dude, honestly, if he would have done it like, listen, if he would have done dinner at Vineyard, mm-hmm. cigars at Corona, mm-hmm. he then ran. just a hangout at like Fishbones, let's just say, he would have been in there. there was one event like two weeks before the election. Yeah. I'd be like, this week we're going to Corona. Next week we're going to Vineyard. Well, Mark, write this down. Yeah. His daughter's TikTok famous, though. So I think he was, he was uh, hoping on that. on that. Yeah, I think it was yeah, banking on that. Local celebrity. Super liberal, isn't she? One of them is. One of them is. Not the one that's TikTok famous. So. Not the one that's TikTok famous. Uh, okay, okay. Local influencer. His dad runs for mayor. To be honest, though, like, never came you, know what, you know what? It makes sense now. They're drugging, They're trying to be Charlie D'Amelio's family. Oh, true. Yeah, you're right. Mm. Her dad was legit like a mayor. You know, he was in like the political eye. I thought he was trying to be. I didn't know if he no, was. he no, was no, he at was, one yeah. point. Yeah. <clears throat> and then his yeah. daughter started paying the bills. Yeah. Hmm. Where at? What town? I don't Somewhere know. Somewhere in Texas. Yeah. To be honest, though, like our mayor, like he's been mayor for so long and he's been doing a good job, though. So. Yeah. I mean, listen, he's got to retire eventually. That's true. He'll probably try to hand it down. Wait, so, where, okay. Where does he hang out at? Okay. He's, old. he's older. We're going somewhere. You're honest. Cigars and networking. Back to our main topic. We have to get this man at the table, break bread, a.k.a. smoke cigars together, become his right-hand man. We should get him on the pod. And then he can hand the election over to you. Exactly. We should get him on the podcast. The mayor? Mayor like mayor? Yeah. would be sick. You think he smokes? I don't know. We'll find out. We're going to start flooding Google with Lake Mayor websites like the Lake Mary Bins.com, things like this. You know. Yeah. Yeah, be careful of that. You get a detective call you. Just don't use the logo. 
Do not use the city logo, even though it's fair use. <laughs> I read the laws. We were nice, and we allowed them to manipulate us into changing our logo. I, I want to say we looked up logos. We looked up Lake Mary people who use a seal, like at the time, and there's there, yeah. a good amount. Their argument was we don't endorse the business, even though it was a great business model. But whatever. Yeah, they were cool. We're cool. I think they subtly endorsed it, but they didn't want to be seen as the official endorsers of the business model literally named after the city. I'll tell you what. I think that was our downfall because we were getting good traction off of it. Yeah. That and our governor was so great that he basically nipped COVID in the bud at like two months. Facts. We were out here helping, uh, attempting to help businesses get back in business, but Ron DeSantis beat us to it. He said, ah, this is bullshit. Open up. Mm-hmm. That Sanford one isn't even a thing anymore. I told Gorbachev. Yeah, it lasted about two down years. that wall. That really lasted about two years. Yeah. What, COVID? No. I mean, yes, but. That that bulky card or whatever it's called? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that died too. Yeah. I wonder if they still accept it. Oh, no, because it was a one-year thing. One-year thing, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I love that we start businesses and then turns out like it was already like kind of a thing. I thought that's where you got the idea. No, we didn't know about it when we yeah, started. Yeah, we didn't actually. Oh, really? yeah. We found out about it after. It was uh, one of our uh, friends' girlfriends was like, oh, they have this one in Stanford. We're like, oh, they do? I mean, d- different different city altogether, so it didn't matter. But I was like, dang. I thought it was original. That might still work in downtown Orlando. Yeah, but I don't think they need it. You'd be surprised. Well, I guess with all the stuff that's going on down there. Let's do the, it. The pandemic they're going through. Let's Epidemic? do it. Epidemic? We'll put a picture of me and Buddy Dyer as like the logo. There you go. There you go. Sick. I got the picture. You got the picture. Yeah, you got it. Let's do it. Yeah, yeah where am I right now? This is Orlando Mayor Buddy Dyer. <laughs> MCO. Have you flown an MCO? <laughs> if you have, everyone heard that went, uh. <laughs> Welcome to City Beautiful. If you're here, or no, what does he say? He's like, oh, um, I take it out. <laughs> if you live here, welcome home. If you're visiting, make sure to check out one of our, like, uh, amusement parks. Like, this and that. This is how you know Zach's been to the airport way too many times. Yeah, he should change up the dialogue, you know? You know, it's funny though, like I fly to airports. So MCO used to be the only airport that did it like that. Atlanta does it like that now. Yeah. And they I noticed they do it a lot more and they do it in all of their trams. Like, yeah. and it's just over and over. Like they do it in the airport too. Like when you get off oh, the they plane do. or. Yeah, 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 they do. That's right. Like in um, the actual terminals. Kansas does it. Yeah. So the, the city of waterfalls. I think that's a bit excessive. Or, or no, of fountains, water fountains. Kansas? What? Yeah. Really? Yeah, I don't know. Do yeah. Do they have cool water fountains? No, I don't know. They have one, I think. <laughs> like, have you heard of Niagara like, Falls? Savannah has a nicer water fountain. I'm pretty sure our house oh, has a water nicer fountain. water fountain. Like, uh, wow. Best water fountain in Lake Mary. The biggest. That's for sure. The bigger the better. Yo, also how, another I'll, incident listen, with Lake Mary. Listen, we'll ask the mayor when he gets on here, but how do you expect to win when someone has a bigger fountain than you? You know? Hmm. Can we, are we going to have to convert the Nikolai <laughs> compound into the new the city. mayor's house yeah the mayor's <laughs> house there you go true also Mark's campaign office one's the house one's the office yeah. Mark 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 will be caught embezzling funds to like secure the <laughs> our houses <laughs> just like he's like it's where I live I gotta stay protected it's like <laughs> bro we have like a terrible or we have like such a low crime right here <laughs> You can never be too careful. A giant put a giant gate with an eagle. <laughs> it's like two million dollars. <laughs> now what you gotta do is you gotta get the gate with the Lake Mary City seal. Oh right? yeah, yeah. But then like have the gate guy make an Albanian eagle at the same time, and then when you're not mayor anymore, you just replace it. Yeah, you're right. You're right. True. And since he's the mayor of Lake Mary, we can't get in trouble for using the logo anymore. I built a cigar room in the office. <laughs> do it. Facts. We just gotta start dressed up in suits, especially you, and like surround him like by security. 
everywhere you go. We should do that. <laughs> go to the town meeting. <laughs> we'll, we'll get we'll get that mm. wannabe mayor's daughter as like the TikTok influencer for Mark. Yeah, Day yeah. in the life is mayor and like Mary, you know. Mm. Wakes down. up. And it's like wakes up, uh, looks at lists to make Lake Mary better, and then like <laughs> you like Lake Mary. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I'm still a little bitter about that because when I went in there, when I originally wanted to do it, she printed out a paper of when I was supposed to do everything, and the dates, the dates were wrong. It, it's rigged, bro. The dates were wrong. The election was rigged because when uh, an official came in, she's like, "Can we put this here?" And I was like, "What is that?" She's like, "Oh, it's just like stuff on how to like uh, run for the election if you want to." And I'm like reading it. And I was like, look at her. And I was like, the, lady, the, number, the dates the lady gave me were way off. And she's like, oh, if you did it then, you wouldn't be allowed. It's like, wow. I should have sued. The election was rigged. Yeah, but you would do the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, because that's a suable offense. <laughs> Is it? Yeah. Uh, I don't have the papers anymore. I can't do anything about it. <laughs> Damn, I was going to say that's her ticket in. Was well, it like one year ago or two years ago? It? No, this is like, like four, four years, years ago. More yeah. than that. <laughs> more, more I like now. where Jared's going with this though. Like, I think me and Alex are going to start on this like tomorrow morning at like eight. Well, I was going to say, I'll be his PR manager, which transitions into campaign manager. Jared will be the technology officer, chief technology officer. Yeah. And I'll, going- be, <laughs> I'll be the, the crazy scientist that's focusing on getting Lake Mary to the moon. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We need one of those. <laughs> <laughs> just <laughs> but you have to drive a tesla and i'll dye my hair gray no no, no. i'll drive a man i'll drive a, an electric car that i made <laughs> and claim that it's hydrogen generated <laughs> whoa you're trying to get sniped <laughs> you know i've been online and um there's people that'll make their own like 3d scanners what there's like a whole there's a community of people that will make their own like they're called like slam scanners oh really so they'll, yeah they'll make their own like little slam scanners just use lidar yeah, but they take two 2D LiDARs and uh, they spin them. Oh, yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, and they, yeah. use an, they use an algorithm to make it 3D. Yeah. That's what uh, Google uses for Waymo. <clears throat> yeah. And this one guy did it for like 100 bucks. Yeah, it's pretty good. I mean, it's not the best, but it's, it's kind of cool. You can make, you can make a... Ooh, you can make an automatic poker card-like dispenser or whatever um, using like a Raspberry Pi. But then attach that to that. This way it's like, oh yeah, check out this. You know, you're sitting at a table with a bunch of uh, the CEOs that you just met for marketing yourself at the cigar lounge, right? But it gets a 3D scan of the room. This way they have no deniability that they were in that room with you. And then you could use it to blackmail them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, 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 no. You're using the wrong terms here. Mark Nikolai fighting corruption, starting with Lake Mary. Tomorrow, the state of Florida... And next year, I the whole you, country. I think you guys have been trying to get me indicted since I got here. Listen, they're going to indict you because you're actually a good candidate. That's besides the point. You just got to fight. You're acting it. like this video won't get taken down anyway. You, you know how many times <laughs> Trump got indicted? I'm, I'm coming here. Zach's talking about how I love Russia or some shit. <laughs> I think you said shit. that yourself. No, I said communist. Oh, yeah, communist. Sure. Yeah. That's what he does, yeah. <laughs> I was just... Yeah, was listen. that like a, what, a Fortean slip right there? I just want to clarify <laughs> for the listeners and the viewers, Mark Nikolai's campaign is strictly built on making the city of Lake Mary a better place. Tomorrow, we focus on making the state of Florida a better place by fighting corruption, uh, increasing technology, and eventually, we're going to hit the White House and do it all over again. Yeah. I want to turn the lakes to golden lakes. <laughs> That's it. Metaphorically. <laughs> and physically. Well, you know, they dye like the rivers green for St. Patty's Day. We could just dye them gold. True. They only last like an hour, but yeah, it's sick. Just for the photo op. Well, yeah, in the lake or in the river, they last for like an hour. Mm-hmm. In a lake, it lasts for a long time. That's true. Oh, yeah, you're That's right. True. You're right. And we'll use we'll use 24 karat gold powder to dye gold. I think like right. Well, that's all natural too. Like that. Exactly. Know. Yeah. And then when it just settles, right? Lake Mary's rich. Lake Mary's rich. Right after this podcast, Our we soil like, is rich. We need to start like getting all the social media handles like marked down, taken. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. I wonder what, how if there's be a fish when it, it turns green. They're probably like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> like, bro, I can't see. What is this? <laughs> I wonder if they're colorblind like Jared and they just don't see anything. True. Would Jared notice? Probably not. Jared, can you see how many fingers I'm holding up? <laughs> Jared's like, I, 
Jerry's like, I don't know what the big deal is. The lake looks the same. <laughs> it, uh, that would make sense. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> oh, man. <laughs> All right. It's Jerry, I like the blue shirt today, man. Very nice. I picked that myself. <laughs> it's like a sky blue. <laughs> He's questioning his existence right now. <laughs> I'm trying to say focus on Mark's campaign, but I feel like I'm the only one here taking it seriously. No, you're not. We're all taking it seriously. I'm taking it seriously. I think Mark's the only one not taking it seriously. I'll say something along the lines of our uh, networks are very insecure, unsecure, and uh, vote for and me. And uh, I got I, mean, I got my top Google <laughs> <laughs> software engineer. <laughs> yeah, we start websites. Man trained in defense, in public view at Google at. You know, he gave cyber symposiums. <laughs> I'll start writing the books by Mark Nikolai. Oh, my uncle wants you to uh, to do a speech at his next cyber symposium. That'd be cool. There you go. This is the, this is the start of it. No, another conversation we've been having. Yeah, that's true. Speaking events. Yeah. Yeah. And then you just start bringing up cigars out of random. <laughs> <laughs> well, like when I was, like working, with the, when yeah. I was working with the cigar guys. <laughs> or just at the end, just be like, and I did all of this. While smoking, but your own. <laughs> I did all this while smoking a basic cigar while watching the Cigar Guys podcast. <laughs> Make sure to check them out. At the cigar and, then, guys and, then, and then you just stop. You give like a two minute stop, right? And people don't know it's a clap or not. And the moment they start clapping, you just interrupt <laughs> them. You interrupt them, and you're like, you're like, and that's what you guys need to do. You guys need to have that outlet to relax while you're coding. Because you never know what ideas you could get from the cigar guys, you know. I agree. We then start, they start clapping again, and you start like, right away. Hold the applause, <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll jump up. Like, can we keep the pause at a minimum? I have sensory overload. With- <laughs> <laughs> Please be respectful for those of you in here that have sensory overload. That's so funny. I remember when that was a thing. If you do run for mayor, you should introduce a new position, like the vice president of the mayor. <laughs> Isn't it like the attorney? Etern- chief executive mayor. Yeah, exactly. Chief executive. And then like, um, you'll have your uh, chief of staff, all these different chief positions. And hmm. you'll impo- appoint all of their friends with no qual- all your friends with no qualifications. No qualifications. I'm joking. We are heavily qualified. I would say overqualified. That chief of aerospace engineering. The t- overqualified for this whole city, bro. Listen, let me tell you something. I don't care what's being made. Companies will put that title designed by an aerospace engineer because it makes it a thousand times better. I think we should put a sticker on our cigar box that says designed by an aerospace engineer. We could. Look at purple. I think we should. Purple like the mattress. Yep. Oh, yeah. Literally, like if you go on their website, you know, for the first two or three years before they were big, they put designed by aerospace engineer. Yep. Same thing with uh, McDonald's when they made that straw. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, that like... Aerodynamics. So for all Mark's speeches, we'll say written by a software engineer. <laughs> written by ChatGPT. <Chachi. laughs> <laughs> well, you don't have to say that. <laughs> <laughs> written by a software engineer that was not any of us. They're like, Mark, where'd you get all these great ideas? Uh, Hold on one second. <laughs> <laughs> I got all of these great ideas... No, uh, from studying the vast cities in this great nation. <laughs> well, ChatGPT has that voice option now. So I wonder if you can code it so it's Mark's voice. Mark will be at, at a mic just like, so, so Mark, what do you think about blah, blah, blah? And he'll be like, and he'll just be <laughs> talking. <laughs> like, I think that this is... <laughs> people, would, people would go on Reddit thinking I'm a alien or something. <laughs> They think I'm a shapeshifter. <laughs> and that's your next step to becoming m- the governor of Florida. That's yeah. why th- you got it. Listen, this is what you got to do to cover yourself. You got to get a ventriloquist license. <laughs> so people are like, no, he's just a really good ventriloquist. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, I could say it or mini market could say it. <laughs> <laughs> there's, three, there's three people on the ballot. It's like our current mayor, Mark, the mini mark. <laughs> <laughs> mini mark wins <laughs> it's like what the hell is mini mark <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> mark and the current mayor split the votes and mini mark wins <laughs> i love that we're already ahead of the curve on the potential scandals that will go 
Yeah, yeah. you hear you heard it here first. <laughs> if we think of them now, we can prevent them later. Exactly. So. Well, two, we're reporting on them right now. So by the time everyone else reports on them, that's old news, bro. It's fake news. For real. <laughs> and fake news. Documented fake news. <laughs> Mark agrees to do all of his press briefings at Corona Cigars if they take the base of cigar in. <laughs> exactly. They'll do it. They'll do it. I think they will. That is actually a really good idea. Thank you. Thank you. Documented. You heard it here first. I like where this is going. I do too. Are you getting that warm, fuzzy feeling inside? I'm ecstatic. Look at him. He's so composed. Unbelievable. I've never <laughs> seen a mayor this he's, composed. He's practicing, actually. I'm actually really impressed. I'd be at the Tommy's with a cigar in my mouth like this, talking like this the whole time. Sorry, I'm 30 minutes late. <laughs> I'm going to be a tad late. <laughs> Shows up an hour later. <laughs> oh, my God. We'll get an automated vehicle that just tracks Mark. Just like, just to make sure he won't be late. And then we'll get the Tesla robot to grab him and throw him in the car. Well, it's okay. If I'm his campaign manager, he'll never be late. You're welcome. There we go. There we go. I'll still be late. Yeah, he'll find you, a you way. just have to cover. <laughs> exactly. Can I just be like the assistant? everything the assistant yeah, yeah yeah just like no one knows what i do but i get it done you yeah, know what i mean he's just like there all the time yeah like so what have you been doing to help like mary yes <laughs> all of it like mary is great successful fantastic let me ask you questions it's like i turn it back on them let me ask you a question what have you done huh because you're <laughs> ask not what <laughs> you're you're delinquent that's not what your city could do for you <laughs> just start calling like reporters out you're delinquent on your mortgage you haven't paid in six months what have you done for this city you're lucky i even let them like not kick you out <laughs> <laughs> so ask not what the city can do for you but what you can do for the city <laughs> well this is great we got a great team you're absolutely right though mark i'll just cover for you i'll do like the first 30 minutes like a press briefing you know and now, the moment we've all been waiting for. Mark. There he comes. Nikolai. <laughs> oh, wait. That's not his truck. Oh, hold on. All right. We'll get back to this. Anyway. Uh, that's, what I would, you. that's what I would say if he was here. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Notice how I didn't say mayor. It was a test. Hmm. I say like two words. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I got to go. I'm gonna go to Corona. Yeah, I only came here because I'm running late for next thing, and uh, I just want to let you guys know. You know, <laughs> felt bad. You are not my priority. <laughs> Can we run in the city's my priority? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm late. I was just supporting the people of this town. <laughs> Report on that fake news. I think, we but should... sir, you've taken. 366 vacations this year. Are the vacations well, was it your leap year? <laughs> <laughs> I think we should uh, acquire the apartments that are above Corona and turn them into the campaign office. Yeah, just open them up all like all all the way. Exactly. That's where the press briefings will be held. We'll put a staircase <laughs> in Corona. Just walk down. You walk down the staircase. Very cool. Very similar to the escalator. We'll put, actually, we'll put a firefighter pole so we could just <laughs> drop down and then at night at Corona, we could, I mean, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> just drop down the pole? Obviously. Obviously, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Obvi. <laughs> and we can have our chief firefighter make sure that it's up to code. Yep. All right. We guess we're going on these endorsements like really early, though. <laughs> really early. I think we can lock some in the bag. Yeah. Hmm. Like pre order the endorsement. Just like you could pre order the Basa Cigar Maduro right now on 1102cigars.com. Did you know that? I bet you didn't know that. I we did. snuck it up on there. Yeah, I already pre ordered like four boxes. I appreciate that. Yeah, no problem. Hey. San Andreas Maduro, full. And I mean full body experience. Full. Full. Full body. You're not ready for this. Viva. Vesa. <laughs> Viva. Viva. Vesa. Hmm. I think that's it, guys. I think so. Look at the time. Thank you guys for tuning into the episode of the Cigar Guys. See you later. 
We hope you enjoyed this episode of the Cigar Guys podcast. Make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can stay up to date with all the latest episodes. Looking for short form content? Check out all our social media accounts in the description below. And now, a final word from our sponsors.